Welcome to the latest Central Coast Newspapers video news interview. Today we're joined by David Mann, the member for the entrance. I'm Jackie Pearson. Thank you so much for joining us, David. Thanks for having Lovely me, Lovely to catch up with you. Um, so I, I had a little look at your maiden speech. You've been a soldier, mm -hmm. you're a scientist, mm -hmm. and a, a unionist. Mm -hmm. um, are they prerequisites for being in the New South Wales Parliament? Have they stood you in good stead? <laughs> well, I think it's given me some broad experience. Um, you know, not from the criticism level that Labor politicians is that we come from the trade union movement. Mm -hmm. and certainly I worked in the trade union movement for a while and I'm completely dedicated to what trade unions do. Um, but I'm a scientist by trade, I'm a geologist by trade, and I work in that industry as well. So I think it gives, um, gives me a bit of broad experience um, to apply to, to the role. You've also had an interest in advocacy for tenants. Um, tell us a little bit about that, that work. Um, I was chairperson and on the committee of management of Central Coast Tenants Advice and Advocacy Service for well, well, a bunch of years, I think over 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, I was advised it wasn't proper that I maintained that role when I was elected to Parliament. So, um, but I still am patron of Central Coast Tenants Advice and Advocacy Service. Um, look, um, and I've been a tenant myself, as many have, um, but I'm keenly aware that um, housing is uh, an important um, factor in building a good society. Um, people are not able to participate in society properly unless they have secure housing. Um, fair treatment of tenants, fair rental laws, um, being able to access their home affordably and um, secure accommodation is all the basis of having a properly functioning society. And, and we're not at the ideal in this country. And, um, that's, well, what's uh, the situation in, in your electorate in, in terms of housing stock, availability of land for affordable housing. Uh, a lot of the development up there seems to be Wyong electorate. What, what's going on in the entrance specifically? Well, the Central Coast traditionally had a large stock of quite affordable private rental. Um, contrary to the view that some people hold on the coast and have put to me, we actually have less public housing on the Central Coast than Sydney, New South Wales average. Um, it's, I think it's a full percentage point, at least less than the state average. Um, and that was covered on the Central Coast by affordable rental. Um, however, um, because we're a coastal location, um, the, the demand for coastal properties has put a lot of pressure on traditional more affordable areas. And, um, and our rents on the Central Coast are some of the most unaffordable in, in the state. Um, I have people coming to my office who are pensioners who traditionally have um, been able to survive in, um, in private rental. Um, they've seen their rents go up and now they're trying to get into public housing because they can't afford to live in the private rental market. So we've got a dysfunctional um, housing market. So What's we, the solution? Well, the solution is is proper affordable housing, and when people use that term, um, some people use it referring to social housing and, and housing only for people on welfare. Affordable housing means housing for everybody. Um, that gives a reasonable term to that return to those who build it, mm. but is affordable for people who live in it. And the, the, the affordable benchmark is usually thirty percent of household income. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of people on the coast in private rental and private housing spending much more than 30% of their income on their home. Um, there's a whole bunch of things council can do, state government can do, federal government can do to um, reduce the pressures um, on house prices. At a federal level, we can do more about um, capital gains tax laws. Um, at a state level, we can do more with planning laws. And at council level, we can do stuff with planning as well. How's now, I want to ask you about um, the, the Great Bird experiment that is the Central Coast Council, but before we get to that, one of the most memorable, memorable photos I've seen of you in the, the past two years was you wading up to your waist um, in the wetlands at the um, 
site that will be the what I like to call the underway, uh, underwater train maintenance facility <laughs> at Arimba, yeah. um, and and Arimba really. Um, battle lost, community not heard. Uh, it's an election year now, and we're going to watch that train maintenance facility get built. What message do you think that sends to the current state government? Well, it's, it's a reminder, if I can be partisan for a moment, it's a reminder of what happens when people vote conservative politicians in on the Central Coast. It wouldn't have gone ahead um, without conservative politicians on Wyong Council, uh, the then Wyong Council, um, pushing the Kangyangi site as the preferred site for the maintenance facility. Um, Transport New South Wales wanted to build it in Warner Vale on industrial zone land mm -hmm. in that location. Um, then council said, well, we've got other plans for that area. Um, those plans have gone nowhere, by the way. Um, and we ended up with Kangyangi. Um, Labor's position on the coast has always been that um, we want the maintenance facility built on the central coast because we want those 200 jobs. It's a, it's a good project. Um, Kangyangi's a pretty done site. Um, it's not an impossible site to build at. Engineers can do these things and, and they'll... They will do it. Um, it's unfortunate it's, it's going to cause a bunch of disruption for the residents, um, which is happening already. Um, well, just it's this also week, going to change. Oh, sorry, go well, on. I mean, just this week, um, the residents contacted me because the school um, drop-off zone um, for school buses um, ha has been removed by John Holland, who are doing the building there. Okay. Um, now, we'll work our way through that. And, and I hope um, John Holland um, makes provision so that kids can get on and off the bus um, or where they've always done in that area because um, the Enterprise Drive is, is a pretty dangerous stretch of road to, mm. to expect people to, to walk too far along. Um, but look, um, it's, at the end of the day, the project will probably cost the government more than it would have done to build um, at Warnervale. Mm. Um, because of the flooding problem. They have to build higher to accommodate that. Um, also because there's no access to the site without building a bridge. Mm. And, and that's a big waste of money. But also, um, down the track, uh, there, there may be unforeseen costs because the, the raising of that site is going to change the way um, Bangalore Creek floods and that floodplain that stretches all the way to Chinaway Bay is going to um, be changed. Oh, Do you I, think I there's been I, adequate? I don't disagree. Um, all I can do is say, well, the government's approved the project now. They say that the modelling has accommodated the concerns about flooding. Um, I'm sceptical of that. Um, I live at Arimba, and um, one of the many tributaries of Bangalore Creek is ten metres from my back doorstep. Oh, okay. I, live near, I live near the university. So all those creeks, all those little are interconnected. Little, um, yeah. meandering creeks um, that run into Bangalow um, come up from all the little valleys of the river and I'm on one of them. Um, in in so the people in my street, and we're in a regular subdivision, we're very close to Bangalow Creek. Uh, it does flood. Um, I've seen the, the, the paddock behind my house full of water. Um, so the potential to make flooding worse is, is a real concern mm -hmm. um, that we may have to address down the track. Um, uh, which, which brings us back to your comments about the um, former Wyong Council bringing the land to the government's attention, but then the government appointed administrator uh, finalising the sale. That's right. The administrators everywhere were, were ticking boxes um, on behalf of the state government essentially. Um, and, and we have a state government and we've got a transport minister um, in Andrew Constance who's just shown himself um, incapable of listening to community concerns. Um, um, a man who, who you know, is absolutely arrogant to, to try and deal with. Um, now I, I tried to approach Ken Yang from a cooperative point of view by pointing out that Labor wanted the project on the coast and we're willing to cooperate in seeing that happen. Uh, we didn't want to cause 
alarm um, unnecessarily um, and oppose all development um, in any location. But we got no cooperation from the government. So um, once they'd chosen Kangiangi after the council put that project or put that site forward to them, um, there was no turning back for them. So what do you think of um, the newly formed Central Coast Council? Have you had much liaison with the councillors and the mayor at this stage? And um, do you think that it's too big? Um, its size is a challenge. Um, it, it is what it is though now. Um, I was always of the view that the, the, the former two councils um, were able to do a lot when they cooperated. So we cooperated with water, we cooperated with garbage collection, and they were cooperating with a lot of procurement in any event. Mm. Um, there's been some streamlining. Um, I don't think the, the financial benefits are ever going to be as great as the state government um, has suggested they would be. But it is what it is now. Um, it's, it, it's, it, it gives us a lot of weight in terms of um, having a say in the state because of the size of the council. But it is a, a, a large beast to control. Runs Upon all reflection, that. though, mm. that doesn't seem to be um, doing us any good when we have decisions like the PAC saying yes to Wallara 2. Well, Wallara 2 is a, a state level project. That's, but but it, clearly, our council is saying it's not in the best interest of the community, and the PAC has said, well, yes, it is. We're going ahead with it. So, the minister still has to give final approval. Mm. Um, but, um, and look, again, the, the amalgamation pro process probably probably interfered you know, detrimentally with a lot of stuff that, that might have been better dealt with um, um, if the amalgamation wasn't happening at the same time. The mine was one of them. Um, council's attention hasn't been fully focused until now that we've got the new council and they're starting to get on top of things. Overall, my dealings with council are positive. Um, when I make representations to council, um, I get a, a timely response and, um, and and a good response. Okay. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with the. You're council. 13 months out from a state election. Um, are you the pre-selected candidate? Does the incumbent um, get to say, "I want to recontest the seat in your party," or how does that happen? Um, Pre-selections for. Um, my seat and the seat of Wyong were opened last week. They closed today. So oh, wow. I guess, okay. um, I guess I'll know at 2 o'clock today whether really? I'm a candidate or not. Okay, well, um, let's assume you are. Um, you're in one of the most marginal seats in the is, state. It, it is the most marginal. It is the now, most Gosford marginal. Gosford was the most marginal. The by-election changed that. Yeah. So I'm the most marginal seat. And um, look, the entrance has always been a marginal seat. And the Central Coast has always been an area that swings one way or the other. It's a historical demographic thing. Sometimes it'll be a bit more safe for Labor. The other times it's been quite safe Liberal. Um, that just keeps us on our toes. I don't know. What are the issues? What well, are the core issues in your electorate? The issues, uh, as we've talked about, affordable housing is an important one that I'll continue to pursue. Um, youth unemployment is uh, an important issue for our area. Whilst unemployment at a national and state level might look good on paper, locally youth unemployment is way above the average, and that can all be sheeted back home to the state government's disastrous handling of technical and further education, mm -hmm. which they're starting to pull back from, but only Labor's got a plan to rebuild TAFE in New South Wales. So there's those two things. And then there's the, the bread and butter stuff that people um, are concerned about locally, and that's continuing to upgrade the roads and the railway stations that we require to get jobs in Sydney and to move around this area, which is a lot bigger than people in Sydney realise. Um, so Absolutely. Look, so I'll be fighting for continuing widening of Civic Highway, upgrading of our railway stations. Tugra Railway Station needs a lift. I'm determined to see that Labor promises that, and um, I'm hoping to get that ticked off in the not too distant future, um, but we want the government to come on board with that as well. As a coastal MP, you've worked closely with the local fishers. 
um, first of all, on the, the um, industry reforms and the licensing reforms, and more recently you've introduced a, a bill about labelling. Tell us a little bit about that bill, because it's new. Well, it was, it was quite an, it's quite an experience. It's ongoing. Um, the vote on my bill will go before Parliament next week. Um, it was introduced last year. So it's a, it's a bill to require um, the labelling of seafood, um, the, the, well, the, the source of the seafood, whether it's Australian or imported, mm. um, to take away food shops, fish and chip shops. At the moment, they don't have to tell you where the seafood you serve comes from. So if you, um, if you order barramundi at your local club, you may think it's Australian because most people think barramundi is Australian, right. um, but it will have come from Vietnam. So in my supermarket, I'm, to, I'm, I'm told on a label whether my prawns are, are US or Thai or Australian. Why can't I have that same information on a menu or a, a, mm. a board in a fish no. and chip shop? Well, absolutely. Um, our view is that it's, it's not a difficult thing to introduce. The Northern Territory has a labelling scheme at restaurants and takeaway mm. food shops. And it's operated successfully there since 2008. There's a, a whole bunch of vested interests uh, out there that whenever labelling at a restaurant or takeaway food shop level um, gets raised, they come out in force um, Why? to argue the complexities and the costs. And, um, and that causes problems. But when they're buying work. the fish, they know where it comes from. Absolutely. Um, so, what are the what, who are these? What are the vested interests? Is it just the usual small business argument that it's more red tape and? Well, the, the restaurant and catering association, which is um, is a big group in this country, um, they've consistently argued, and their argument is accepted more on the conservative side than on our side, that the costs are very high, and the reality in the Northern Territory was the costs weren't that high at all, and. Um, business was able to comply within a couple of months of the laws being changed up there. So are you saying that the government won't vote with this very straightforward bill? They're saying that they want to introduce a voluntary trial, whatever that means, um, and they're, they're, they're saying that they're not going to introduce a scheme of labelling, even though they promised over 12 months ago to do so, uh, until they get everybody to agree. Um, I, I, I have difficulty seeing everybody agreeing ever. Uh, on, the, on, on this subject, um, it requires government to regulate. And the regulation I've suggested is pretty straightforward. It's very basic. Um, retailers would only have to indicate whether the source of the seafood was Australian and imported. Right. And, um, and that's not a difficult ask. Um, when I had discussions with clubs and, and hotels representatives, they told me, we all know where our seafood comes from. Um, which is not required to put it on the menu at the moment, so we don't. Um, they would prefer something that was applied across the board and then they'd be happy to comply. Okay, what else are you working on? What else is going on? And, and it's a busy sitting week, uh, busy sitting month, February, so what, what else is on the agenda? Look, um, the government hasn't introduced much this, this last sitting week and I guess I've been a bit focused on getting ready for my debate, which occurred yesterday and there'll be the vote next week. Um, I've also been appointed Deputy Whip for a short time. Okay. That gives me other duties around Parliament. So um, there's a whole bunch to keep me busy. I do tend to focus a lot more on my local constituency. Mm -hmm. uh, over the last 12 months, my office has dealt with the, an asbestos problem and, and that's caused um, some, some issues in terms of responding to local constituents. We're on top of that now. Um, I've got a fantastic bunch of staff who help me um, deal with issues that come to our office and we've got a pretty good hit rate in terms of getting things done for the community, so I'll continue to do that. So, so tell us about um, Assistant or, or Deputy Whip, just, and then I'll... Well, my job is to make sure everybody turns up to vote and helping the whip in that Oh, regard. hurting the chooks. Yeah, and that can be hard <laughs> because um, cause politicians, you know, they're, um, they're very important people and... Um, they don't want like being told what to do by um, anybody else. Um, so our job is to make sure the troops turn up to vote and um, then we have to do the counting on the floor. And, um, and uh, well, it's like herding cats sometimes. Are you enjoying it? Well, it's, it's, 
Uh, it's not the favourite part of my job, but um, <laughs> it's an important part for our team, and that's that's what. What is the favourite part of your job? Look, I, I like um, I like um, the moments when you've been able to solve a problem for somebody locally. That's at a very personal level, and then um, so we've had a number of those, and that's really satisfying. Um, getting somebody access to more affordable housing, things like that. Um, on, a, on a slightly larger level, um, doing things which the whole community can appreciate and, and what we're able to do in identifying the, a government plan to, to demolish a station master's cottage at Arimba. Mm -hmm. um, we stopped that, we're not going to do it now. Um, but now we've got to take the next step and get it preserved. That's going to help the whole community um, into the future. It's one of our important historical sites and it was really bizarre as to, you know, to mm. think that the government were happy to see that torn down. Um, we've preserved that for a window now. We just need to get the money to, to get the preservation to completion. Good luck. Good luck with pre-selection. Thank Thanks. you so much for joining us. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff.